I'm Sam Kumar, a PhD student in computer science at UC Berkeley. As part of my research, I've developed TCP-LP, a performant TCP stack for low-power wireless networks, in particular for networks based on IEEE 802.15.4. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate TCP-LP running as part of OpenThread, an open source network stack used in the home automation space by Google Nest and other companies. The code for this demo is currently available as pull request number 6650 on the OpenThread GitHub repository. What you're currently seeing is the setup for the demo. The two large blue boards here and here are Nordic NRF52840 development kits running OpenThread. Using TCP LP, we'll establish a TCP connection between them and transfer data over that TCP connection. The small green board here is a packet sniffer. We'll use it to capture packets that are sent as part of the TCP connection. Using Wireshark, we can then analyze those packets to see how TCP LP operates. Now let's actually begin the demo. The two Nordic development boards are connected to my computer via USB, so I can use screen to interact with the OpenThread CLI tool on each of them. So first, let's get that set up. Okay, so now we'll use the OpenThread CLI tool to start an OpenThread network. The network will have two nodes, where each of the Nordic development boards is one of the nodes. Uh, and furthermore, as we do it, we'll also set up Wireshark to be able to collect and decrypt and decode the packets correctly so we can see what's going on in the OpenThread network. So, uh, so let's get started. Now this data set command it gives us the information to set up Wireshark. So let's go ahead and take care of that. It looks like the network will be on channel 13. So we'll collect packets from the sniffer on channel 13. Okay, we'll also need to give Wireshark the appropriate context to decode the packets and decrypt them. So we'll give it the, uh, the mesh local prefix, which we'll copy and paste here. And we'll also want to give it the network key so we can decrypt packets. Okay, so Wireshark should be all set up. So let's bring up the network on this node. Okay, and we see some well-formed packets in Wireshark, so that's good. Uh, we'll also set up the second node to, to join the network. So um, let's give it the network key. And we'll also want to give it the pan ID, which is this item here. Okay, and let's bring up the network. So it'll take a couple moments, but we'll see an exchange of packets in Wireshark uh, once it joins the network. Yeah, so we just so we just saw it there. So this is now a child, and this one here is a leader. Uh, eventually, the second node will upgrade to a router, at which point we'll see some more packets being exchanged. But this is all we have to do in the CLI tool to set up OpenThread. Um, so now that we have that set up, we can actually move on to, uh, to using TCP, uh, which is the point of the demo. So um, I've added some functionality to the OpenThread CLI tool that will allow us to, uh, to interact with the TCP LP code and actually use TCP. So the first thing we do is you run TCP init on each of the nodes, and that initializes the part of the OpenThread CLI tool for TCP. Okay, so we run TCP in it. Uh, now we want to actually use TCP 
uh, to go ahead and establish a connection. So to do that, we'll have the second node listen on all IP addresses and the port 30,000. And then we'll have the first node go ahead and connect to it. Uh, so to do that, we have to give it the second node's IP address. And it actually has three IP addresses. Um, in principle, we can choose any of these uh, and the TCP connection will work. Uh, for the demo, I'm going to choose this third one here uh, because we have to make some choice as to what IP address to use. So we'll tell this node TCP connect this IP address and the port 30,000. Uh, so we just saw some packets exchange here. These are actually unrelated to TCP. That was just the second node becoming a router. Uh, but now when we run this connect command, uh, we'll finally see some TCP packets. Uh, so in particular, um, we see TCP connection established here on both sides. So both sides see the connection uh, is now active. And on the right side in Wireshark, we can see the syn synac ack sequence of packets, which is the uh, TCP connection establishment handshake. Uh, we open up the syn packet to look at it. Uh, you can see that it's actually using uh, some TCP options. So it's trying to negotiate the maximum segment size, the use of selective acknowledgments, and TCP timestamps. Um, and furthermore, if we look at the flags, we can see the ECN and CWR flag set, which is, uh, which is an attempt to negotiate the use of explicit condition notification, or ECN, uh, for this TCP connection. And all that's happening because TCP LP is a full-scale TCP stack. In fact, it's based on uh, the TCP implementation in FreeBSD. So it comes with all of these full-scale TCP features. Okay, so we have set up a TCP connection. Now let's actually use it to transfer some data. So if I do TCP send hello, uh, we'll see the message hello was received on the other side, and we'll see the packet containing the message and an ACK uh, from the node that received it, where this ACK is used for reliability and this packet here will contain the actual message. So if we go into data, we can see that it contains the sequence of bytes that encodes hello, basically containing the message. Uh, and TCP connections are bidirectional. So we can use the same connection for the second node to send a message back to the first node. So we can do something like this. And we can see, yeah, this node received world. And we see the same sequence, the push ACK followed by ACK. Uh, in fact, if we open any of these packets and we look inside, uh, we can actually go ahead and um, we can see this TCP timestamp option here encoding uh, some TCP timestamps in it. Uh, so it's using the full scale TCP features in the actual connection itself. Um, so anyway, uh, we've transferred some data uh, and that's great. But an additional application of TCP that's really important is the ability to transfer a large amount of data. So bulk transfer of data. Uh, and TCP will let us do that efficiently. Uh, so to see this, I've written a tool called TCP Benchmark. And what this will do is it will have this node send a large amount of data uh, to the other node. And the large amount here is 72 kilobytes of data. Uh, so, so it will send 72 uh, kilobytes of data over to the other side. And what will happen is that uh, that second node will be sending acknowledgments in response. And the first node, based on when it receives the final acknowledgement, can tell how long it took to transfer that data. Uh, and based on the amount of data it's transferring, which is 72 uh, kilobytes, or actually we're using binaries, so this is uh, 72 times 2 to the power 10 bytes. Um, so, so once it does that, um, it can compute the good put, which is the application level bandwidth, really. It's how much bandwidth the application can get when sending data within a TCP connection. So it'll measure that good put and it'll output the value. So we can go ahead and run this command and we'll see the data being sent in this case is just the letter A over and over again. Uh, and at the end of it, uh, it gets a good put of about 81 and a half kilobits per second, which is pretty healthy. Um, Meanwhile, on the Wireshark side, we, we saw the packets being transferred. And uh, you'll notice that we have the TCP segments as we expect, uh, but we also see uh, a bunch of these data packets. And what's going on here is that these data packets uh, are six low-pan fragments. 
and each TCP segment consists of multiple six low pan fragments. And uh, and what's happening is that these fragments need to be reassembled into TCP segments, and Wireshark does that once it gets enough fragments that compose a single uh, TCP segment. Uh, so the other thing that's happening is that unfortunately the packet sniffer is imperfect and it occasionally drops packets and the problem becomes somewhat worse when you send a large number of them all at once like this. So this isn't actually the full record of all of the packets being sent, uh, but we can look inside some of the packets that were successfully reassembled and we can see under here 6 low pan how it consisted of six different fragments which you can see as these data um, as these data packets elsewhere in the stream. Now these acts here aren't TCP acts, those are link layer acts. So each fragment is individually acted the link layer um, as part of the IEEE iterative 15.4 protocol. That's how they show up in Wireshark. Um, the actual TCP acts are separate from those. Okay, so we've transferred some data, we've measured the good put. Uh, now let's actually go ahead and tear down the TCP connection. So uh, once one side is done sending, uh, I can run this command tcp send end, which is sending the end of stream signal, basically a fin packet in TCP to the other side. So when you send this, this other side realizes it's reached the end of the stream. So it won't receive any more data from the first node. Um, and we can see this finac act sequence that corresponds to that happening. And once that happens, this node here can't send any more data because uh, the TCP implementation won't let it violate the protocol that way. The send end promises not to send more data, but the second node can still send more data until it also goes ahead and does a send end. And once that happens, uh, we'll see the, the final uh, fin packet sent um, and we'll see this TCP colon disconnected message uh, on this node but the first node is in this time wait state where it has to wait for the two MSL timeout before the TCP connection is fully torn down. Um, uh, so, so we'll go ahead and wait for it. Meanwhile, I want to point out that while you typically see this fin ack ack segment uh, written next to each other, we have some intermediate data here, which is why they're separated because we did the uh, because we did this send goodbye here. Um, so. Um, so, so that's it for TCP. Uh, in a little bit, we'll see this node here that was in the time wait state uh, become disconnected. But other than that, uh, I've shown how you can establish a connection with TCP, how you can transfer some data, and it also showed how you can measure the good put. And finally, the 2MSL demo expired and we got the TCP disconnected message on, on the first node as well. So, uh, so that's all for the demo. Uh, thanks.